in a vertical situation, if I drive over a small reef with fish all over it, I'm usually gonna try my jig and wrap first. I'm gonna, it's a fast deploying bait. It's got erratic action. It's got a ton of hooks on it. If a fish even looks at it the wrong way, it's gonna get hooked. And the other thing is the fish need a little action on it. A couple of quick rips on a jig and wrap, usually gonna pick off those active fish first. And sometimes I've had days, especially on Mille Lacs, where you pull up, pull up to a rock pile, and there's fish all over the top of it. And you can literally sit there for hours and catch fish, not one after another, but you're coaxing them into biting every 10 to 15 minutes. And that's where I'll employ those jigging wraps. Usually, you know, I, I like to say early summer, or, you know, early on, early summer, and then fall. But then when you say that, you're, you're basically saying jigging wraps are on all the time. Like there's always a time and a place for jigging wraps. So I always keep, right now my rod locker, got three rods rigged, jigging wraps on. So that's, that's the vertical situation I'll use them. The other situation I'll use them in is on a sand flat if wallies are spread out and I can simply move along at 1.5 to two miles an hour with my trolling march, sometimes slower, sometimes 0.8 to 1.4, somewhere in there, and just snap jig, jigging wraps. And usually those fish, we snap jig it, let it fall, and when you pick that slack up, usually they're right there. So it's a faster way of fishing when the fish are aggressive. And the cool part is you don't always need live bait. There's no cover situation I really avoid other than thick, thick weeds. You really don't wanna be throwing a jig and wrap into thick, thick weeds, because no matter how hard you rip it, especially in like cabbage or coontail, you're not gonna be able to get that lure clean with a nice, you know, good rip on, on your rod. So I kinda tend to stay away from, I'm not gonna say I stay away from weeds with them, I stay away from thick weeds that are better suited for like a jig or something like that. So water clarity in jigging wraps is not really, I don't, I don't really have any hard line on water clarity in jigging wraps because I've caught fish from stained water at Lake of the Woods. I've caught fish on, in four foot of water on Red Lake with jigging wraps. I've caught them pretty much everywhere. So I have my rule of thumb with the hot crankbait colors usually transpose into jig wrap colors and spinner blades and jigs and things like that. So that's usually kind of the method I'll stick with. Working a jigging wrap vertically, I'll usually start out pretty aggressive. Like I'll give it a cup, right off the bat, I'll give it one big rip to kind of, you know, get their attention, get the fish looking. Hopefully, especially if there's another angler in the boat, I'll give it a big rip and hopefully the fish look at mine if he's just kind of shaking it a little bit. But I'll give it a big rip and then I'll just kind of shake it and give it a pop every 10 to 30 seconds. And you'll find the cadence that works for that day and then you'll kind of hone in on that and just rinse and repeat. So that would be my vertical presentation. Is it hitting the bottom? Uh, no, I, I t it depends. You know, sometimes I'll hit the bottom if I'm on mud and give a poof. But uh, typically on rocks, I really don't like, I don't like the jigging wrap touching the bottom with rocks. Not that I don't do it, I do do it, but if I don't have to, I'm not gonna touch jig and wrap on the bottom with rocks. Now sand, with when I'm snap jigging a jig and wrap, that is, that is basically snap, let the line and lure catch up to the bend of the rod and snap it again and just figure out that cadence. Is it one or two snaps real quick? Is it one snap real quick? Are you just skipping it along? Basically, what are you doing, what are you doing with snap jigging? You know, if you translate Snap jigging with a jigging wrap or snap jigging with a jig, they're basically the same thing. So just kind of take whatever you do for snap jigging, transpose it to jigging wraps, and you'll be successful with the jigging wrap as well. Casting jigging wraps is basically like snap jigging them, but what I'll do in that situation when I'm casting jigging wraps, I have found fish on a flat, and I've came by with side imaging and I've put a waypoint on them, circled back and it's just a fast run and gun approach to fire jigging wraps at them they're going to fire off your rod really really quick they're going to get to the bottom quick and you can start that snap jigging back to the boat that's when i'll employ casting jigging wraps or if i'm working the edge of a weed line a clean weed line so you got a definite weed line that goes into a little gravel maybe a little rock or maybe sand that's when i'll just start casting that that weed line with the jigging wrap so that's when i employ casting for them. 
call it sharp shooting jig wraps if you want. I mean, that's that's pretty much the technique. Mark fish, put a button on them, come back, fire at them, and catch them. So size choices in jigging wraps is, you know, it's a tough one for, because I inherently, I mean, a lot of guys use the, the fives and sevens for walleye. I, I tend to do better on the sevens and nines is kind of my comfort zone with, with the jigging wraps. I mean, in the winter last winter, I was out fishing with a guy and I had, I had nines on and I was just cracking fish left and right on them. I was, my lure was going down faster. I had a bigger profile and I was catching bigger fish because they were just keyed in on that bigger bait. Now a seven, I use a seven a lot more in the summertime because that's just for me, it's a perfect casting bait. It gets down quicker. And I think the profile on it is absolutely perfect. It's perfect minnow size. So those are kind of my two favorite colors. Now down to panfish, a size three with a little larva on the bottom of it, or even summertime, you know, when you mark suspended crappies, number three is a great size for that. So they really, if you look at, the next time you have to start, if you look at your jig wrap sizes, kind of start with panfish and crappie on the size three, and then end it with, you know, your really apex predators, your pike, large walleye for your number nine. Colors with jigging wraps, pretty easy for me. I just go back to whatever crankbait was working or what historic color I know works well, or if that system is full of perch. If I know there's a bait and flux on Mille Lacs with perch that year, I'm gonna be using a perch colored jigging wrap. I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple. Or on lakes where historically I've been to and a blue and white works or some type of blue chrome or whatever, I'll start with that color jigging wrap. If UV is the color of choice, it, you know, in spinners or jigs or crankbaits, I'll start with that on the jig and wraps as well. And that's, that's why I'm so glad to see the, the companies really expand their jig lines, their crankbait lines, everything into UV to chromes, all these different colors. Because in the end result, that's what us anglers want. You know, imagine, imagine a world without UV jig and wraps. It'd be a terrible place. So line choice for jig and wraps is kind of similar to my ice fishing setup. I use 10 pound yellow or green Suffix 832 down to a size 10 or 12 swivel, VMC swivel. And then I just go, I don't know, this long, not exact, you don't have to measure it out. That long worth of fluorocarbon, again, 10 pound and tied direct right to it. And that's my setup for it. It keeps the twist out. You have that sensitivity and I'm using a nice fast action rod with that too. So when that fish even looks at it, you can lean right into them. So it's a pretty simple setup. Braid, swivel, and when you're not fishing jig and wraps, if you don't have a lot of rods and reels, you can simply just cut that whole set off, throw up in the glove box and tie it on whatever you want. But that is, that braid setup is really universal for pretty much anything, jigs, whatnot. Sometimes you might have not have a swivel on there, but it doesn't hurt in any situation. It's not gonna, having a swivel on there is not gonna catch you less fish, but you definitely need it for a jig and wrap. So rod and reel for jig and wraps is for me, medium, light, extra fast. The extra fast for me, when you pick that up, when you feel that fish, that gives you that instant sensitivity to know whether a fish is there, or if you touch bottom, or if you picked up a snail or a clam or something like that. So for sizes five and under, I like medium, light, extra fast. For size five to nine, I like medium, still extra fast on a rod. And I like that in a seven two to a seven six. Really like that, if, especially if you're casting, I like that seven six length. But for, for jigging wraps in particular, summer, winter, it doesn't matter, size, anything, extra fast all the time, no matter what. Now for reels, I just like a 2500 size. You know, it, everyone's got a 2500 size. It's a good casting reel. It's a good all around reel to use whenever. But the main key to all that is braid. I really like 10 pound 832. It's time tested. It's proven. It doesn't fail. It lasts a long time. I mean, and it casts a, a country mile with even down, you know, number five jigging wrap cast like 150, 200 feet with, with braid on there. So that's my setup. Everyone's got seven foot to you know seven two to seven six, 
medium light or medium extra fast rod. So throw your jigging wraps on them and go catch some fish. So modifications to jigging wraps. If I'm fishing rocks and I know I'm gonna be fishing rocks or the day before we targeted fish on rocks, what I will do, and if we're ripping them through rocks, what I will do is cut the front hook off, okay? And people go, ah, oh, you just wrecked the jig and wrap. Well, in my line of work, cutting the hook off and being able to use that and put it in the jig wrap box is, hey, that's gonna be my rock bait or that's gonna be my ripping through weeds color. That's what I'll do. But that's about the only modification I'll do to a jig and wrap. Other than sometimes I take the center treble and I replace it with either a one size bigger or I'll take it and go one size bigger in red or same size bigger in red treble. Those are about the only modifications I'll do to a jig and wrap. Bu building confidence with a jig and wrap. I get a lot of customers in my boat every year that are, you know, I'm like, hey, we're on a jig wrap bite. And they're like, you know, they're a little, little gun shy of the jig and wrap. Um, it's because they, they haven't been on a lot of fish to hook a lot of fish on it. They're not really confident in it. And then you take them out and you kind of show them like, hey, this is how you do it. Pause your jigging action. You give them four or five different tips. The swivel, pause your jigging action. Hey, this is how you mark fish and throw right at them and pull them out of a the school. There's, there's different things you can do with them. One thing I would do if I was beginning with jigging wraps, I would start with you know, five and smaller and get to know those baits and how they work before you go like right up to a number nine. Cause when you throw a number nine, like eight feet of water at a school of fish, that thing is down to the bottom really, really quick. So you should be pretty proficient in jigging wraps before you start throwing the higher, you know, the bigger stuff at them. Um, especially, you know, in winter, you just don't want to go drilling holes and, and dropping a number nine down, especially if you don't have the history on that spot or know that they're hitting a lure that big. Mistakes with jigging wraps, number one would be not having a swivel in on your line, you know, a foot to two feet away from your jigging wrap. If you go cast for even four or five hours, the jigging wrap twirls around, it does all the fishy things that make it a great bait, but it, that'll put line twist in there, so you need a swivel. So that's number one, use a swivel. Everyone knows the rules, put a swivel on a jigging wrap all the time. The second biggest mistake you're gonna have is guys over jigging the jigging wrap. And they don't, they don't ever stop it. They just go, whoa, and they just keep doing this and this and this, and they'll draw fish in, and they never give the, they never give the, the fish a pause. Like, a really important part of a jigging wrap is you gotta pause it and allow that fish, you've brought them in, you've done everything right, and then you never pause to let them hit. I mean, you, that fish can just rock it right through and miss the bait. So pause with the jigging wrap, especially in the winter when you're marking fish. If fish comes in, came in hot on your jigging wrap, pause, and 90% of the time that fish is gonna smash that bait. Underrated times for jigging wraps is gonna be size two for crappie in deep water. I see a lot of guys, they go to live bait first, they go to plastics first, and they forget that they have these nice little jigging wraps that are gonna get down really quick, have a lot of action, and come in a ton of different colors. And as I mentioned a hundred times before, if a crappie even sniffs that bait with his paper mouth, he's gonna get hooked on it. So a lot of times that number two is gonna allow you to fish panfish without any bait and you're gonna be able to get down to them quicker and have a lot of action while doing it. You're gonna draw them in from further away. If you're fishing jigging wraps and you're really ripping them through sand all day or rocks or a little bit of gravel or even your sand mixed with a couple rocks all day and you're catching fish and you had a great day, you go out the next day and you start missing fish. One thing to do with jigging wraps, I always keep a hook file and check those hooks, especially those two front and back ones. The, the center treble usually stays really, really good, but it's pretty easy when you're snap jigging a jigging wrap to plug a rock and not even know it and kind of bend that point over a little, but the hooks are really, really durable on there. You can sharpen them a hundred times. So brush them up with a file, at least take a look at them, do the fingernail test on them at the end of each day and you'll be just fine. Size and jig and wrap, let's say you are you go throughout the day and you're using a number seven jig and wrap and the fish are kind of petering off on it and you've tried different colors and this and that. Sometimes just going to a five, just stepping down one size in the same color 
is gonna allow the bait to fall a little bit slower. And you're talking not much slower, but a lot of times that's just enough to grab that fish's attention again and, and get him to strike that bait. So if you're on a, a jig wrap bite, fish don't usually, what I've found is they usually don't come off that bite. Like you won't be ripping jigging wraps and then go to throwing live bait on jigs and within four hours of each other. Usually they stay on that same program, but just like with crankbaits, sometimes you have to upsize a little bit, sometimes you have to downsize a little bit. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're jig wrapping. Play with size if the fish fall off, a little downsize first, and if they don't go downsize again, and then maybe throw on a number nine and see if you hit, can hit them with heavy artillery.